This conference will now be recorded. Yeah. So, uh, hi. Um, so today we are going to discuss about um, like server migration. So server migration means like see how how can we migrate and before activity, after activity. I will explain all of all of the things. So here, what is the topic here? Server migration. So today we are going to discuss about server migration. Server migration means what kind of server you are migrating. That is the most important. So you have the physical server from on premises that you want to migrate to AWS. That is the case one. The case two is you have the VMware server from on premises so that VM you want to convert migrate to AWS. Two things. So sometimes the server is from AWS itself, like you can also revert, you can do revert also from AWS to on premises. And also from one data center to another data center, one region to another region in AWS itself, you can migrate that you already understand. And also you can migrate from server to Docker also, Docker image and all. That is the one more important. If you understand this, the step one, how to migrate the physical server from on premises to AWS. So even I did uh, some physical servers, but really lift and shift is mechanism is the one, but uh, this is not like that. This is AWS is not encouraging that. AWS is creating their own servers. If you want to buy a server from AWS, you can buy it like that. So that means like how, suppose imagine you have the server in your on-premises. So how to migrate really to AWS? So that means like see, for example, you have one physical server in on-premises. So this server you want to convert into the AWS, you want to migrate into the AWS. There is a two ways. So one is directly, one, one way of approach is directly you can create a equivalent server in AWS, equivalent server in AWS with the same uh, resources like 2CPU, 4GP, for example. You can also create with 2CPU, with 4GP RAM like that. So that is the step one. So the step two is you need to configure the same layout, like file systems and all, like slash apps here. Suppose there is a slash apps and there is a data inside. So you also need to create the slash apps or whatever the file system layout, same as it is. You need to make sure same as it is. Then you need to copy the data. You need to copy the data from on-premises to AWS. On-premises to AWS. Then you need to inform to the team, like whoever is managing this, then they will test everything is okay in AWS server and all. One point day, uh, the day of migration, you need to bring down this server and you need to swap the host name and IP address is different definitely. So you need to swap the host name and you can migrate the server and the server is ready in AWS with same configuration and everything is same as it is. And some changes we may need to do in this scenario, like some scripts are running with the old server, old IP address. We need, they will take care about that. And some, sometimes you, you may need to use some backup environments and all that you need to update. And also <clears throat> you need to update the, you need to update the most important thing is DNS. You need to update the DNS from on premises to Yes. So these are all of the different steps we need to do while migrating the server. So that means like, see, so please go ahead any question how to migrate the physical server. Step one is create, create a new server, new server in AWS, AWS, which is with all the required resources and all. So that is the one. So, and also create with the, uh, create the file system layout, FS layout LA, 
same as on premises same as physical server so that is the second third one is the third one is the uh, you need to copy the copy copy the data and the fourth one you need to create the same users same users users and uh, say you need to create the same users from this thing and uh, 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 same users PA SSW or DS also because the customers they need to log in with the same credentials and everything also need to install the install the all softwares softwares same as physical server so that means you need to take the uh, rpms the packages you need to download all the rpm packages and you need to use that so that is the next thing so then coming to <coughs> need to install all software packages you understand then coming to uh, create same user and uh, copy the data and hand over hand over to customer so then he will test everything if everything is done and they, they when find that we need to migrate the day of the the day of migration i'm going to see are you t-i-o-n the day of migration so we need to replace the post name we need to swap the swap ip and the host host name name host name ip and host name we need to swap it then then we need to um, then uh, we need to change the change, change the uh, scripts as the rapts scripts if any any scripts are there so if any scripts are there then we need to swap the scripts and all so then if the scripts are ready then we are almost there we need to most important we need to change the <coughs> dns to dns modification so we need to do the modification of dns modification also so after that dns modification is done then the we can we can bring down the everything is done then we need to after that we need to bring down the bring down the server physical we need to bring down the physical server so that you are all set so only thing is like after bringing down the physical server so virtual server is available in the network and you need to you need to redirect all the all the more all the like backups and you know need to configure they, they must be configured already but need to enable ena ble enable uh monitoring a more to arrange monitoring and uh, monitoring and uh, backups etc to new server not, not to monitor backup and you need to enable the backup and monitoring like that so in, these are the steps like you know usually we do like all the you know, steps by step by step and all so this way we can migrate the server from on premises to uh, this thing and uh, then final uh, like um, what else we have if there is any security ports need to enable we can enable so these are the things that usually we we are doing this actually so we'll wait for the one week and decommission the do the physical server so decommission the physical server so the, in this way you are all set so this is the physical to watch physical to aws conversion one step the second way is the second way is you can convert the, the physical physical page where you say uh, which is say, CL, physical to 
O2L, you can convert P2V and then, then move to AWS. This is the second approach. You need to convert first to physical to your VMware server, virtual server. Then you can convert into the head, you can move into the AWS. This is the second way of approach. So now we will discuss how to migrate a server from on premises to that is VMware to um, AWS. So this is the one more important physical to VM, then, then you can move to AWS. So that is the second approach. So please go ahead any questions here on uh, 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 how to migrate. Uh, how to migrate and my PREP migrate uh, on premise servers to, uh, yeah. So, uh, so, how to migrate the server from on premises to AWS? This is the step one, like you know, the second one is the physical to virtual. You can convert that virtual server we are migrating. If someone asks you in interview, you can explain the same way. If it is the physical, usually we can migrate to the VMware and we can convert into the VMware. The VMware team is doing this job. After that, we will have the VM. That VM we are going to migrate because the, this is what we are doing usually 90%. Direct physical server also we can do, but you know there is a, some challenges in that. Like okay, while migrating the physical, uh, uh, the application may not supporting sometimes like that because like they need to the environment is changing. So. Uh, uh, other than that, you can convert into VM in your company itself. Then you can test and you can verify everything is okay. Then you can migrate to the. It is one more step, but still it is uh, it's easy to validate uh, all issues and everything from on premises. That's why people will prefer always like this kind of uh, setup. So I hope everyone understand this. So before going to virtual to uh, uh, virtual to VMware to VM, VM server migration to AWS. So how to migrate the, how to migrate VM server to AWS. So how to VM server to AWS. So please go ahead any questions here before going to this. Kishore and funny. Sorry, any questions? The outline, you know. Yeah, I'm clear. Clear, right? So then coming to in this virtual to physical environment, I mean, like how to migrate the VMware server. Here I am going to explain three to four phases. The phase one is how to migrate. Phase two is how to set up the initial setup. Then phase three is the like challenges what we are facing while migrating the servers and all. So this is really, really important. Okay, please try to concentrate a little bit more. So here, how to migrate means like if you go to the migration steps, you know, these are the steps we are taking. Imagine this is the VMware. I think definitely Kishore know about this, but funny, did you see this screen anytime? Was it may, may not be. This yeah. is the yeah this is the vmware console where you have the virtual servers in your on premises so there is a vmware environment that vmware environment is setting up for um, this thing so yeah i think you understand right uh, kishore you understand like this vmware console yeah v center console v center console right so migration, imagine you got the ticket to, to migrate the server from on-premises to AWS. One day, you, some team is requested, hey, migrate the server from here to there, like that. So then coming to, then coming to, uh, then coming to, uh, immediately you can see, uh, uh, then you decided to migrate to uh, AWS. So. It's very easy, simple step, right? To right click on the server. This is the management console where you can see all of your VMs from your on premises. So these VMs, these VMs, yeah, these VMs you need to migrate. One second. 
is these people are changing over weekend also from our company so here right, just imagine one server you want to write you want to migrate to aws here i'm trying to explain how to migrate the steps the step one how to migrate the aws step two is how to create this whole setup you got it what i mean Kishore, you understand right what i'm trying to say yeah imagine you joined in one company the setup is already there everything is there one day you got the request to migrate the server so you just go to the vmware console and you can select the server which you candidate you want to migrate to aws right click on that server right click on that server then you can see there is a migrate option can you see this yes right mm, nice. yeah just right click and migrate to ec2 then then the next step is then it will ask you in aws in aws where to migrate so like what operating system you want and which region you want to migrate how to like what environment and subnet and what model server and ip address everything it will ask you then say migrate that's all mm -hmm. So then we don't need to do anything. Just wait for one to hours based on how much data you have. Your system is going to migrate to AWS. And all. So it is taking a little bit of time. It is importing to AWS. So from on-premises to your AWS is moving now. Based on the data, how much data you have, based on that, it will take some time. But you understand this meaning right nothing we can do right you can explain okay sure you can explain the same way how you are migrating means we can go to the server and we can say right click and migrate then it is asking all the configuration in aws like regions and uh, model server and environment and everything then we can migrate we can say migrate and it is going to migrate so based on the data it will install any tools uh, on the vmware that is the, so to get that. That, that is the initial setup that i will explain i just explained two the three phases right phase one is just you know like uh, how i am migrating i am explaining later on how to set up this whole environment okay, okay. that i will explain in few minutes but uh, this is just migration while migrating you want to see the status of the migration how much it is migrated how much still it is going to migrate and all you can able to see from this console can you see that so once in VMware, there is an icon like AWS Management Portal in VMware. How we can get it, this and all, I will explain in a few minutes. Imagine there is a management console. You want to see that status, how much is completed, how much data is migrated. So then you can just go to the management console. Here you can see all the data and all import instances status. If you click on that, you can see the how much importing and the, the server like you know how much is pending so vm2 ec2 migration vm ec2 aws3 migration also we can do so the ec2 you want to just convert into the aws uh, s3 yes you can do that also so that is the way how we can use this option so now coming to now coming to you understand right this status of where to see the status of migration and all in vmware there is a uh, there is a plugin that plugin is aws management portal we need to install the, that plugin and we need to enable that uh, with our aws that i will explain in few minutes then click on that imagine if this setup is already there from long time onwards in your company then you just click on that status and you can see how much is completed and all so that's all how to migrate the aws is very easy and all. you got it right migration yes sir. yeah yeah so then coming to here most important interview questions and all like uh, so before migration what you are going to do after migration what you are going to do what are the steps it is doing behind behind this uh, migration because one day it is fail 
then you need to troubleshoot that like that. That's why we need to understand what are the steps it is doing well, right? In, in VMware, you set right to right click and migrate to AWS. What is what it is doing exactly behind? That means whatever the server you are trying to clone, you are trying to migrate, that is taking as a clone of the server. First step one, what it is doing, this VMware is taking the snapshot of that server, snapshot of the server. So this is the actual server, that snapshot, the VMware is taking a snapshot. This snapshot is migrate, copying the data as a snapshot to AWS. That AWS snapshot is converted into a AMI. That the AMI is converted into a server. So these are the, all the steps it is doing behind. So that means like the step one is like, what is the step one? While migrating, what is the step one it is doing? So that means like, see, while migrating, the steps while, while migrating, what it is doing, take the it is the system is taking the snapshot, taking the TAK and taking SNAP snapshot, snapshot of VM, first step one. Then second step, what it is doing? It is copy, copy, snap, SNAP snap to AWS. Step three, then the snap is converted into a Snap is converted into SN, AP Snap is CON, VERT is converted to AMI. You understand this, uh, everyone? AMI, yeah. So that AMI, AMI, by using AMI, this is creating a server. AMI, uh, creating server using AMI, CRVAT, I'm creating server, US, I'm using. AMI creating server using AMI. Once the server is ready, once once the server is ready, so creating server using AMI. This is step also you understand, right? So then then it is doing the reverse process. So create by using AMI, creating the server using the same AMI, creating server US I am using same. AMI. So that you will get the same server, same server. Then it is doing the reverse operation, deleting uh, AMI, right? So from AMI, deleting the ELE, TING, deleting AMI, AFT after server creation, create after server creation, creation, TING, after create, server created. So once the server is created, it is deleting the it is deleting the uh, AMI. So after that, it is deleting the AMI. After that, deleting the AMI and deleting the snapshot, the SN AP snapshot after after deleting AMI. So these are the reverse process. So this is the way what it is doing while migrating. So while migrating, these are the steps it is doing. While migrating, these are the steps steps doing by migrating. Okay. So while migrating, these are the below steps are going to export. So you understand these steps, I think, right? So while migrating, what do we need? To, yeah. Uh, do we need to shut down the server before? Uh, no need. No, no, no need. But but recommendation is shut down. Why? Because while cloning the while cloning, if you are people are writing some data and you are taking the clone, it will not be complete clone, right? Right. That's yeah. Okay. So that's why definitely it is recommended. But it is it, no need really. So it, it will, because it is taking the clone, it is playing with the clone. It, it will not touch your server. But definitely server performance is also going to affect. But, uh, okay, uh, this takes a lot of time, right? Like if, uh, if data is there. Of That's why uh, we, we usually do the weekend migration. Migrations usually we do weekend only, right? So okay. it is kind of part of the uh, main time. So that is the one thing. So then coming to while migrating steps, migrating means uh, connect to CONNECT to 
VMware, right? VM, WR, VMware. That is the step one. Then select the, then LC, LCT, select the server to migrate. Server to migrate. Then if you step, if you explain these steps, right, it's, you, you feel like very comfortable uh, because everyone do the same. Even I'm also, this is the live, live screen What while migrating, I take this, uh, these things, okay? So these screenshots. So then coming to select the, I mean, connect to the VMware and select the server to migrate. Then, then, then uh, uh, right click on that, R-I-G-H-T, right click on the server and there is an option like migrate migrate to ec2 click on migrate to ec2 option c-l-i-c-k click on migrate to ec2 option once you select that once you select this migrate to ec2 option migrate to ec2 option then it will ask you to provide all the uh, uh, provide the ROVID, provide all AWS, uh, AWS specifications or whatever we call like what we say, uh, provide all the AWS, the TA, high alias details. Then migrate, then it is going to migrate. Then my GRAT migrate. So this migrate, so uh, migrate to AWS. So you click on that, then it is going to migrate to the database. While migrating, what are the steps it is taking behind? So you are understanding, right? Now you are very clear about what is our topic, server migration. Then how what how to migrate to the AWS? If it is the physical server, how to migrate? If it is the virtual server, how to migrate? You understand, right? Yeah, I'm clear. Yeah, yeah. So then coming to, then coming to, so before migration, B F O R E before M I G R E T I one migration, what need to do? So before migration, this is the most, most important thing is, you need to enable the DHCP option in VMware. Only that is the one important, okay? One step one is you need to, we need to, we need to make sure DHCP, DHCP, E-N-A-B-L-U-D -E from server side, server SID. So why, why do we need to enable DHCP from server side? Because, because uh, in AWS, if you remember, AWS is always used the, the uh, uh, dynamically, it is taking the IP address, right? In AWS, automatically IP address is taking. If you see uh, every time, right? Yeah. So that's why that's why we need to enable the DHCP from the source side. Then it will allow to create the uh, automatically from destination side also. Otherwise, it is going to fail. So while trying to install the server and it is looking for the DHCP, it is trying to assign the IP address automatically, but it is unable to assign and it is going to fail. So that's why we need to make sure the DNS DHCP must be enabled. If you are not clear, let me know about how to enable the, I mean, like uh, uh, enabling the DHCP meaning and all. So, DHCP the, need to be enabled uh, on the no, AWS side or uh, no, no, server no. side. The server is going to migrate to AWS, right? Once it is migrated, AWS is trying to assign the automatic IP address, but the server will not allow because in from the source side it is not enabled DHCP. You know, on the server uh, we need to enable the DHCP. Or VMware side. side. VMware side. In right click, on the they VM or uh, VM only VM on the VM, right? Now. Yes, yes, yes. If you right click the properties, there is a property enable DHCP. Okay. Yeah. So.
itself that is the one thing and uh, make sure the hardware the make sure resources are yes so you are yes should as it so you will be should be m a t c h e match so that means like if you created a um, two cpu with four gb ram is existing one if you create one cpu one gb ram it will it will fail so make sure you can make it big higher higher configuration or at least the same configuration and also uh, and also the disk space and everything while selecting you need to make sure like you know the same same what kind of uh, that is completely from the profile it will you will get it i will explain but we need to make sure all the resources are same as it is before migrating that is the this is the one some scenarios it is going to fail and also we should make sure like the bandwidth the bandwidth we need to be a in the bandwidth bandwidth you need to check the enough bandwidth for data copying and all sometime while copying the data that it is really syncing the data from on premises to aws if it is the terabyte petabyte kind of data definitely it is going to take if it is one terabyte also it will take one week that's why if that's why whatever the data if it is the big data kind of thing so usually if you go to the server's point of view the server don't have much data right so the server has only limited data like 2g 5gp 10gp 20gp the os i mean so the actual application data if it is small amount of data then they can wait for one one day or uh, two hours five hours ten hours like that based on data if it is the very big data terabyte petabyte and all then they will go for the snowball concept there is a snowball concept then they need to sync the data to snowball and it is migrating to aws server so that means the snowball concept is like they will come come to you with the uh, the snowball uh, with the, there is a storage unit so if you go to the uh, snowball here if they, they will if you enable the snowball if you requested snowball concept in aws then they will come to your data center with these uh, uh, boxes it has a lot of it can store a lot of data and they will come to your data center with these boxes and they will take the all of your data and they will connect into the aws so if it is the big data it's kind of big nowadays big data companies and so many if there is a database server you want to migrate those are the some scenarios they will use nowadays they, they are providing some other technologies like uh, nas technologies or some other like high speed uh, technologies and they enabled many things these days but everything is chargeable but yeah uh, there is a facility to migrate the data also but this is only server migration so that's why we no need to worry about these things so that is the one thing bandwidth we need to make sure resources we need to make sure and one more important thing is that you need to remember all username passwords and everything same as the like user name and the passwords and everything is same as same as uh same as old server okay you need to remember that otherwise if you forget and in aws you can't able to log in into that server so that means like you need to make sure username and passwords also uh the same and uh, and uh, the um, uh, yeah these are the some scenarios and make sure and um, make sure uh, should not sho uld should not should not change 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 any uh, keys k any access keys a c c e s s access key yes while while migrating so if you remember there is a access keys and secret keys for the user right so those should not be changed any time at the time of migrating this is the most important thing we need to remember and we need to understand so this is the one more important like you know before migration what we need to do while migrating what it is doing and how to migrate vm server and how to migrate the physical server so these steps are good enough to explain in interview 
while working, you don't need to worry about all these things because it's very easy migration. And if there is some issues, vendor is there, team is there, support is there. So many places we can fix that. That is not the problem. But only interview is the big challenge, right? While going to interview, you can explain these steps that is good enough. So that is the how to migrate the uh, data and all. So while migrating, and after migrating, what you are going to do after my GRA to migration, what we need to do. What we need to do is the one more important. So after migration, we are, we are going to do some steps, okay? I will explain that. So before that, any questions here, anyone? Can we assign the static IP address to the target server? Uh, AWS by default DHCP IP address it is giving, right? So after creating the server, you want, if you want, you can create extra interface and you can configure your own IP. Okay. Yeah, so that is the one thing. So now coming to after migration, what it is doing, what you need to do exactly. After migration, so we need to uh, bring on the server, the step one, the, it is going to power off state, okay? You need to bring PR and bring on the server. So once the server is on, then you need to connect using um uh, you need to connect using your uh, uh, old username password and it is giving a ip address so it is giving a ip address it is giving the ip address we can connect using ip address and we can change the password and uh, uh, then uh, we can change the password uh, password or ip address or host name whatever you want and the day of the migration, right? So you migrated and you can hand over to let's say and hand over to over to uh, customer uh, with the double IP with the new new IP. Then he will test everything is okay or not like that. So once he is ready to shut down the on-premises server, then he then he will ask us to shut down the old server. The security shut the OW and the um, uh, uh, VM server, VM server, and uh, and uh, um, uh, swap SWF swap IP address. The VMware server name and host name. You can change the host name and IP address and, uh, and create the DNS entry. Update the DNS entry with the update DNS entry EMTR with the new IP and uh, host. So host name, new IP and host name, you can change that. This thing, then you are all set. Your server is ready to access, your server is updated and everything is get ready to move. So go Even ahead. Even the make... host name changes uh, uh, while migration or it remains the same? Host name, host name it, is go, it is going same, but IP address is changed, right? So the new IP address should be okay. mapped with the host name. Okay. That's why. So you don't want that. In that case, you can you can um, uh, provide create new interface and IP address and host name. Host name anyhow same. So IP address of the server should uh, uh, add uh, add with the new and uh, new interface. So you can create a new interface in AWS server and you can assign the same IP. But usually we can change the IP address also because the network itself is different. But uh, again, when, again, when it yeah. takes a snapshot, right? When it takes a snapshot and creates a AMI, mm -hmm. uh, it copies uh, everything, right? Like whatever is there in the present. But uh, the networking, it will take. Okay, it doesn't take the mm -hmm. uh, yeah, network details in the AMI. Network details is not there. Okay. Because the completely network network is different network. Okay. So this is the one more how to migrate the steps. So then we need to understand how to set up the initial setup like uh, to like if you go to the EMware by default if you see right click you don't see up this option. If you go to the VMware directly without setting up this whole environment you don't see this EC2 migration you don't see this option you don't see this uh, management console and all. We don't see that. 
to see this whole set up, to see this all these things and you need to set up something here in vmware and aws and everything that i will explain in, in a minute so before that any questions here anyone you are good right yeah i'm good yeah yeah so just give me five minutes break then we will continue that okay this conference will now be recorded so now we are going to discuss about how to set up the initial setup initial setup means like by default so maybe kishore you can understand more try to understand more so because this is the really really important steps okay so so what is our step now how to set up the the whole uh migration uh, uh project so that means like uh, uh, you need to set up your environment so for that first step one is there is a step one is you need to go to the aws management console then there is a you are with me right kishore hello hello yeah, yeah you, you are with me right yes sir uh yeah yes yeah yeah now we are understanding how to set up this whole process right yeah so in that process the step one is you need to go to the aws so so initial setup in initial setup of server this is server my gr api one from on from vmware to to aws in this step step one is we need to go to the aws connect to aws uh, connect to uh, aws so aws connect to aws connect to aws and we need to look for the server mi migration service there is a server migration service here so if you see here server migration service so in this server migration service we need to download a ova file can you see this yes, yes sir yeah so in this uh, server migration so you just need to go for the server migration service server migration service the step one step two is you can go to the server migration step step two is you just getting started then there is a v center environment for hyper v environment and there is a azure environment also from Azure, from Azure also, you want to migrate the server from Azure to AWS also possible. So Azure to AWS, that is the one case, and the Hyper V another case, and V Center another case. So like that. Suppose from VMware, just we need to download the OVA file, and otherwise you can just go here and you can download. If you download the OVA file, this is the step one. You need to download the OVA file. So once we download, once we connect to AWS, go to the server migration service, then download the OVA file. Download the OVA file. So once you downloaded the OVA file, this OVA file you can use. This OVA file you can import to the next step is you can import to the IMPO RT import to vmware so then you can import to the vmware whenever you import to the vmware then this this is acting as a one server in vmware in your company so that means this actually this ova file is from aws and you download it and that's the way we are establishing the connection between aws to your vmware and you are importing to vmware and once you import it to vmware then you need to power on that the ova file 
So you need to power on the OBF file. Uh, now, uh, once you import it, uh, it is power on the connector. C O N N E C T power connector. So once you import it, it become as a server in your system, and that server acts as a connector in between AWS to VMware. You need to bring on bring up the server. You need to power on the server, so the connector. Once power on that, you need to we have the password like we need to connect to C O N N E C T connect U S I N using the default username E C two hyphen using E C two hyphen user and the password is and the and the username is this and password is. Like uh, EC, uh, EC, uh, EC2 pass, EC2 PASS is the password. You can connect to the connect to the server using EC2 iPhone user, and the password is EC2 pass. So once you connect to the system using EC2 iPhone user and EC2 pass, but we don't want to use the default username, default password. So that we need to set up our own setup dot RB is the one scale, one command you need to connect in in AWS in AWS connector. So once you type that, then it will give you the menu to set up your press one to configure IP address, press two to configure the username password. Like for example, some options it will give you. You can configure based on your company IP address and all. Once you configure that, then your system is almost ready, so that means like your your uh, your connector is ready to access. So you can just configure the configure the IP and the user IP and the uh, change the CH change change the PASSWRD. So you can change the password also. Once you change the password and the IP address and everything, you are almost there, right? So then what you can do once you configure this step, once you configure these steps, then the next step is, then the next step is you need to go for the, you need to uh, configure IP and uh, change the password. These two are done. Then coming to, you need to connect to that uh, uh, connector, then connect to CO, connect to, C O N N E C T for using user using IP IP so using IP connect to that using IP so please go ahead any questions here about um, uh, connect to I mean up to this Kisha you are with me no sir. Yeah, yeah. yes so this is the most no, important so... yeah. We have uh, this OVA files only for uh, Hyper-V and uh, uh, VMware, that's it, right? And no other... Uh, yeah, yeah, do, VMware's in market, VMware technologies only two, right? Hyper-V and this only, right? So we have Azure also, you can set, you can migrate from Azure as well. Ah, okay. Microsoft Azure 2 here also, three years. So... That means like uh, you, uh, like like uh, step one you can connect to AWS. Step two server migration service. You click on server migration service. Then download OVA file. Import to VMware, and you can connect to the uh, power on to that connector. That means like just now I explained sometime like this is the v your on premises VMware server that is, that is the VMware software is installed, and there is a virtual machine. See how. No, you have so many virtual missions. One of the virtual missions you want to migrate to AWS. So that is our plan. Suppose to migrate to AWS. So AWS in one to one of the data center, you want to migrate the server to here. For that, this connector, we just are talking about connector, right? This connector is the one of the component. It is the mediator between two all these things. That I just explained something steps like First, it is converting uh, uh, the converting as a snap and con copying the snap and email conversion. Lot of steps it is doing, right? So these are all steps are done by this connector only. 
so you just migrated and just uh, you provided all the details say migration then who is taking care about rest of all job your connector that connector you, that connector is the server migration service you just go to the connect i mean aws the server migration there is a ova file provided by the aws you can download it and you can import to your vmware now you can import to vmware now the ova file is in vmware you understand now yeah so once the ova file in vmware then you are almost there then connect to using ec2 and ec2 password to this connector you understand this step also right yes yes then you can you, you, here three steps you need to do one is from vmware side what we are doing the second one is the connector side what we are doing in aws side what we are doing three steps you need to understand here so now we are trying to understand about the connector side we downloaded the connector we imported the connector we connected we connect we powered on that and we we connected using ec2 iphone default password and all and we we configured as for our company's networking our company set up like we can we just to, to configure that there is a setup that rb command so then this is the ova file right we imported and it power on and it is a it is a linux server it acts as a okay. linux server you got it yeah 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 so then then you can configure using ip address and uh, password there is uh, options here so once you type this command there is some options you can see like this see let me show you that So you need to configure IP and the password for that. Um, set up that RB. Then the screen is appear like this. So it is still loading this way. So in this diagram, you can see in this document. Can you see this? Connect to this, then EC2 icon, setup.rb. It will give you menu like this. So re press one, reset password, press two, configuring the network. Like that, it will give you your control, your controller is giving these steps. So then you can you understand these steps, right? Yeah. yeah. So then you can provide these steps you are all set once you provide all the steps then your system is ready to access your system is ready to access and you can con connect to using your ip address you can connect to this connector you are connect we are working on connector now so we'll discuss how what we can do in vmware what we can do in aws i'll explain while configuring the step one you understand so then once you connect to this connector, right, we need to configure that connector. The connector should understand both VMware and AWS. Connector is in between, right? Connector in between that should understand your VMware and your AWS. So this is the connector, but it is part of VMware, but still it should be configured to understand what is my VMware, what is my AWS account, which account need to migrate, and everything you need to configure in this connector only you understand yeah yeah if you understand yeah if you understand that yeah go ahead any question this connector need to be there uh, on each of uh, the esx servers or only one uh, only one, one they are rest of all connector right rest of all connector. Okay. 
so only one is enough after after okay. getting the yeah after getting the ip address if you take that ip address into your browser and hit then you can see this screen okay aws connector for v center can you see that yeah then you need to it is it is the it, this we can we are configuring the v center i mean connector now this connector is having it is asking what is my vmware v center address where where i can connect to migrate the server your connector is asking where i can connect to your connector is asking where i can connect to where i can connect to migrate the server you, you got this point yes so here your vmware team need to provide that details anyhow you also having access mostly via the infrastructure team is having access on this so you can connect to this you can connect you can provide the ip address of that then you then you need to the second thing is in aws side so which user which account need to access to migrate the server in aws you understand yeah the account that means we need to configure both right vmware this is my vmware it is saying this is my aws your aws yeah. access keys and the secret keys you need to provide and in vmware which user is connecting in aws which user is connecting like that these details you need to provide that's all your connector is ready to migrate now your connector understand what need to do and your connector understand your vmware your connector understand your aws you you configured everything in connector if not clear let me know i will explain again this part no, i am clear you are clear right so yeah. yeah if you understand that then what what we need to do from aws side got it so in aws side we need to do only one thing you need to create a user you need to create a user that user must be added with one profile that user must be added with one profile so in iam in iam if you go iam in iam we need to do two things we need to do two things from vmware i mean aws one is you need to create a aws user you need to create a one user and you need to assign a role for that user otherwise you just create a user and while creating the user like uh, whatever vmware user or something like that so we can provide the uh, user name like uh, 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 sms server migration service or some sms user you can give any name then while creating this user this access keys and the secret keys you can be access keys and secret keys of this user this is the most impot import can you see this vm import export role for the connector yeah so yes. that means you are configuring aws with one user that user must be allowed to import export if you go to this policy if you go to this policy also it is clearly showing you it is clearly showing you like to export import i'm taking this to notepad so that what it is doing clearly you can understand the policy and all so here if you see this policy it is clearly hello to it is clearly to hello to copy the snapshot registered ami and describe and all the things can you see this that's why it yeah. is copying from snapshot from that's why your connector is allowed to copy the data from uh, vmware to that is the snapshot and it is creating a image registration and that means it is registering the v image out of this snapshot and it is creating the it is creating the it is creating the server and all you got it up to this point right yes 
So that means that in VMware, you just need to allow this, uh, you just need to allow this uh, uh, user, I mean, this policy, and you can create a user, and it is generating a access keys and secret keys, if you remember, access keys and secret keys and the, the, these things, right? These two things you need to provide in this access key and the access key and the, this thing, VMware migration access key, and access key you need to provide. That's all. You got it? Yeah, I am clear. So that that user is able to talk to connector. This connector is able to talk to VMware and all. So AWS side AWS side task is completed. VMware side is is completed. Now not VMware connector side is completed. Now the next task is what we can do in VMware side. So in VM side, what we can do, you need to create a one user. You need to create a one user in VMware. So this is VMware admin will take it. You need to create a VMware uh, user. Can you see this V V axis S A user something like that? You can create this user. That user you need to provide here the VMware side user vCenter service account. Can you see this vCenter service account user? You got it? Yes. So that means this this connector is now connecting to VMware also with service account with the VMware service account also. So that means like uh, with our service account your VMware is also accessible. That VMware account is also created, and that account is added to VMware also. That's the way your community connector is able to understand both VMware as well as AWS. So then it will able to migrate the server. So I hope you understand. If everyone understand, if not clear, let me know. Uh, I will explain again. I'm clear. I'll, I'll clear it. Right? So then coming to then coming to so one more step in VMware also we can configure the template. If you remember, right click migrate. Then there is a template it is showing, right? The template it is showing like uh, like this, like uh, like this. If you see the template it is showing like this, right? You can create your own template also. That is the in VMware side, you can create your own template. You can create your own template to do this job. So to create the template, to create your template, so we need to take, we need to uh use this option like here there is a one option to create so if you create like if we go to this uh, uh, center so this is everything is from aws management portal for aws management portal for vmware so we need this aws management portal in, in vmware we need to configure that once we configure this then you can able to do all these things how to configure this management portal and all i will explain in a minute so this is like you are setting up one VMware uh, management portal in VMware. So for that, what you need to do, you need to in VMware, in VMware software, there is a plugins, right? I think uh, 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 Kishore, you may know that. Uh, you, you may understand the plugin meaning. Yes. If there is a plugins like you know just uh, we can download that uh, uh, we can just like in our phone uh, app app how you are downloading app and you are doing right in the same way in vmware we can download the plugins whatever related aws is provided a plugin to vmware and you can import the um, uh, plugin uh, plugin like you know uh, uh, somewhere uh, i don't know where exactly it is separate screen maybe so we need to download that plugin. That plugin is ready. So once the plugin is ready, then there is a one configuration we need to do. That is the AMS 
portal. So if you go to the our document, there is a Amazon management portal for this thing. So one second, let me show you that. We need to go to the AMS portal actually. Not this one, let me show you that. Anyhow, we'll see from server side also directly. So, AWS management portal also we have. So, in AWS management portal, like this if you see OVA file we downloaded and steps we understand everything we understand migration we understand then then you understand this is the plugin can you see this in the, in vmware manager in vmware manager for software software manager you know they sms like aws connector plugin is there you need to download that once you download it then you can see this icon in that place you can see the icon here so once you downloaded that, then you are all set and you can create user and you can configure the connector and everything. So then, then there is a AMS. AMS. This is the uh, this is the a AMP. So Amazon Management Portal from VMware. You understand the term Amazon Management Portal from VMware? You already you already downloaded the plugin. But that plugin you need to configure. Can you see this VCP plugin HTML? So that means from VMware side, from AWS side, you need to enable this to access from the VMware side. You got this point? Even plugin is allowed, but it, that is just plugin. But that plugin should be accessible. The plugin should be accessible from our AWS account. So that we need to configure that. We need to configure in our AWS. So for that, it is going to aws.amazon.com. Then it is going to uh, our account, our AWS account. Then it is going to, yeah, it's still loading. Otherwise, let me copy into the other browser. So sometimes this browser is a problem. So then once we, we configure this, once we configure, then your um, uh, uh, AWS, it is just generating the key, one key, that key you need to add into the, the same location where you are managing. If you go here, there is, a, there is a AWS management key. Can you see this rotating key? Here, you need to download the key that aws key is different this you this aws key is different this is from this is from vmware like let's see why it is not coming it is still loading some reason so it is still loading some reason so imagine this is once it is created connected right so then then it, there is a one option like aws uh, let me go to here and google so that link i need actually 
so but you got the point right kishor what we need to do yeah yeah so the plugin should work to for that we need to aws amp 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 So let me uh, like just go through this. I will explain later on that. I need to have the link. So that key, it is then once you click on that link, it is asking you to key generation and you can just provide that key. Then your account is ready to access. Then your account is ready to access. So please go ahead. Any questions here about so how to uh, configure this, uh, this, this plugin also. So now we are almost there everything you understand once you click on that this amp can you see this amp then it is asking you amp connector key only you need to download the key and you need to provide this key in 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 the same connector location you understand yeah yeah so that this plugin will allow that's all only that that management portal v center that is the, the here two things like vmware side vmware side and our uh, aws side key we are providing both are ready so that your portal also your management portal also will work for this so that is the uh, that means you are providing the trust relation between iam users as well as your service so that is the most important so go ahead any questions here about how to configure this connector and all create amp key the keys is very easy just create a key once you click on this uh, this uh, uh, connector right if you uh, click on this then you can see there is an option like uh, like this create the key and all so then you can create the key that key you can upload to vm uh, vmware connector then you are all set to go. So that is the connector related. So uh, that uh, that is only to monitor uh, the migration. Right? Exactly, that is for monitoring purpose. Whether it is migrating or not, like that. That status. is the one. Yeah, status and all you can see from there itself. From there you can see that status actually. So that is the one purpose the second purpose is you can create the you can create the profile also profile means like from there you can like set up the profile here like this so the connector right once you create you can create your own template you understand the meaning okay yeah. you can create your own template like right click migrate then there is it is there it is giving you some template to default template right so you can create your but what is the template. use of this template uh, what is the use of this template uh, you can directly select the template instead of giving one by one value but right click uh, my right click migrate, migrate. Uh, right uh, if you click on right click and migrate right then it will ask uh -huh. you what server what region and everything right instead of that you can select the windows okay. otherwise you can select the linux then it is giving all the default uh, values instead of uh, individual like what key what key you want to give what block device mapping security everything it will give you and you are all set so that is the most important so please go ahead any questions here about how to migrate the server migration related uh, this whole thing it's very easy and most important most important then we connected to ip then what we did what we did exactly uh we connected then we configure cyn fi configure the connector cyn and ecp or connector with the aws and aws and vm wr vmware credential very yes credential so 
then in VMware side, we need to, in, in AWS side, AWS side created here, in AWS side, AWS, uh, in AWS right? AWS side, what we did in AWS side, we created a, CRUAP create a, uh, create a user, right? So, and uh, uh, provide the policy, um, update the policy, P-O-L-I-C-Y policy, update the policy with, the, update the policy with the uh, uh, VM, uh, IM, P-O-R-T import, export, EX, P-O-R-T port policy, and uh, uh that's all uh, and uh, uh we need to generate the gne ra p generate acce ss axis keys and se 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 crt secret keys and provide this update this keys update phes this keys to connector so this is from AWS side we do, and we will provide the keys and all. And also in VMware side, in VMware side, right? VMWR side. So create a side side. Create the, create in VMware side what we do. We can create a user, VRVAT, create a service, CRVI service, ACCO, event account, account. Uh, account and enable admin e n a b enable a d m i admin p o l i c y policy admin enable policy admin policy enable admin policy to the user so enable admin policy to the user and uh, update this user user to uh, with the connector with a w s C O N N E C T connector. So then we are all set. Then last step is you need to configure the. We need to. We need to generate. We need to. Um, we need to. The um, what is that? Template, right? We need not template. We need to create the. Now uh, what is that appliance? This one. Plugin. We need to import the plugin. We need to I am download plugin. D O W N download plugin. Plugin from VMware. Okay. So from VMware, we need to uh, VMware side only. We can do. We need to download the plugin and uh, configure the configure the AMP. So configure C O N F I G U R E configure. Uh, AMP Amazon my migration portal. A A Amazon, I mean AWS management portal for V V center V C enter V V C N T E R should be should be C O N F R D U R E. So this is the total thing. So please go ahead. Any questions here about uh, uh, how to migrate and all? So I will share this document also. Um, yeah. So this is a C R E server M I G R E D P S steps. Okay. So I, I and also I will share with you this data as well. So in charting, you can just download to your. You can just copy and you can in, put in your notepad. Okay. So. Now everything is ready with you. So any questions here about how to migrate and uh, uh, these steps? Uh, when do we use this uh, server migration service and uh, uh, this migration service and the cloud endure? Uh, what so you're on my uh, mute. One second, 
Yeah, yeah, come again. What is your question? Hello. Yeah, uh, we have the cloud in your right. Uh, we have cloud. Cloud and your cloud and your migration. Yeah, different tools like you know nowadays the market is very big. Some third party companies are coming into picture and they are. AWS tool only. Maybe they. I'm not sure actually. Cloud and your cloud. Right. Cloud and. What is that? It has come there, cloud in the search button itself. In the search button itself, you're getting right cloud in oh, okay. Uh, so this is Kishore here. Yeah, Kishore. Uh, in fact, like the cloud endure is getting uh deprecated by end of this year, and uh, uh, in place is forcing us to use EDR elastic disaster. Yeah, elastic. Elastic disaster recovery kind of I think this is different. Yeah, so behind the scenes, this is a cloud endure. All oh, the functionality, okay. everything. So they completely integrating with the AWS itself. Oh, okay. This is the tool in uh, uh, this is from storage side, like elastic, like elastic recovery, scalable cost of this. Uh, this. AWS yeah. Elastic Recovery setting and uh, like, this is for storage or like all data? Uh, it is just to like uh, migrating servers into the AWS. Sub service and install agent and replication, agent replication on the source server. Okay, I think, yeah, these are the steps replicate, replicate to AWS, Elastic Disaster Recovery Automatic. Yeah. Entire servers including operating system and replication oh okay perform okay maybe I, we need to see this actually so behind the scenes uh, it uses uh elast um cloud endure but uh, that's why client cloud endure is not there actually they they are migrated to this this tool i think yes that's true if we if cloud we endure, do, actually but, that's a different uh place like a it is not tightly integrated. Now they started uh, integrating with the AWS itself. Yeah, maybe that is the third party. That's what I'm telling you. So maybe yeah. it is there in the marketplace. Marketplace. Uh, it's so, not third party, but it is outside, sir. But like uh, it was acquired by AWS. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, RKET market, PLDC. Okay third party but it is included but it, they still use the marketplace product maybe CLOU, the cloud otherwise they converted into this name See, they converted cloud under disaster recovery to AWS. This is a, this is a marketplace. Now, still, they added into the marketplace cloud endor, cloud quick. Uh, this thing, cloud endor, recovery. Cloud. Yeah, they they are still in uh, marketplace actually. But uh, as you said, they are they brought it uh, and they. They try that application and they set it the whole feature in in as a one recovery point like that. Look like. So in this the server setting they need to set it up and this is the trained agent like you know it is look like agent based. The agent based then replicate the data every uh, AWS elastic disaster recovery automatically replicates. Uh, Entire servers, including operating system, application data, configuration and all. Perform the drills. Okay, perform um, frequent drills by launching drill and recovery instance AMS. Job and all. Yeah, I think we can do this. Yeah. So these are the different steps. I think like step one, we need to replicate, we need to enable and all. 
volume this is the, maybe we need to check this how the chart is in that so snapshot retention how many days they are keeping then we use on the clear. So the last step is the on the clear. So this is the one like using pop, private public key. So this is from on premises uh, stuff. Create public on the VPN connectivity with the clearing connection. So let me explore on this. So I will explain. Yeah. Yeah, but the VMware side, like, but that is not for only VM or something like that. Right? It look like this is for any agent base. So maybe okay. we need to download the agent from AWS, and we need to do that. And we can explore also with migration services. You can explain this way, like we are doing this process as of now. That that is maybe as Kishore said. Kishore is working in Amazon itself for. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He is working. Amazon is. So, any questions, anyone? Let's see. Thanks, um, Kishore. And, uh, so, in the meantime, what you can do, you can go with our cloud formation also. I already shared with you uh, the cloud formation templates. And, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.